All right, at work, I've ran into a situation where the new C5 instance types use MVME block devices. They show up as almost like local SSDs, even though they're EDS, which is network storage. And that's fine, but they appear to come in random order. So sometimes root will be 0N1, and sometimes root will be 1N1. And that makes it really hard to for your provisioning scripts to know what to do in that situation. And after fumbling for about a week, I fig figured out a workaround slash strategy for dealing with that. Um, the There's this tool that AWS has that they document here, but they don't host it on any website or anything. The only place you can find it is on their AMIs. And so I got this script out of their AMI. And what it does is it essentially tells you, it essentially maps the dev, the dev device, the MVME dev device, which could be random, back to what you set when you created the AMI or what you set when you launched the instance. And so I use that script in combination with a script that I wrote to essentially iterate over every device combination that's possible and create a symlink from here back to here, which is what we're expecting to use. And then you end up using this device as your um, device when you pass to your provisioning scripts to create the file system and to um, mount the file system. So how we do that is I can take a sh short quick look at the different scripts. So this script here is the one that AWS created and puts in their AMI. And it's kind of, I'm not even sure what the code does, but essentially you get these flags. So I, I'm taking advantage of this flag where it only returns the block mapping device, which is the MVME device. And I created a script to loop over all of that. And we can step through this script right, right now. Um, I've documented it well so that people can know what's actually going on. Um, these block devices are the ones that are non-EBS. And we can, we can assume that because typically AWS uses B, B through G as local devices. Um, non-network storage devices and so those get all that we create an array and map and add that to the non-EBS mapping it's kind of hard-coded there and basically if we iterate over it and we get a zero we just say that that's going to be B if we get a if we get a three that'll be E and it's just the index of the of the array and then we iterate over a zero through 26 because that's the limitations. Um, you can find out more on this document here. And basically, as we loop, we, we add zero to 26 to i, so i becomes one of those values. And we create a variable called mve block device. And then the first step we do is we check to see if that exists. If it doesn't exist, there's no work to be done. There's no symlink to, sim to be created. However, if it does exist, then we fall into this loop, or we fall into this if block. And the first step we do is we use that other tool to map the MVME block device to the, to the block device that we set in our AMI or, a, or in our instance when we launch it. If the mapping device is empty, we assume that the that it is not an EBS device, and so we use the non-EBS mapping to create the mapping to create the uh, sim link. Otherwise, and then if the path does not have dev in front, we just make sure it does. So that's what this block does. And lastly, and that's just normalizing the data. And then the last if statement says. If it exists, don't try to do anything to it because we don't want to clobber what already exists. Otherwise, create a symlink from 
the block device, the MVME block device, to the mapping. And that's all there is to it. Now, I'm going to write up a blog post sharing my findings. And if you want, you can come along and watch how I write my blog posts otherwise. That's really all you need to do is grab these files and use them in your provisioning scripts.